All right, what's up, my friends? Welcome. Um, this is not a set review, unfortunately. Yeah, so uh, got super sick on Thursday. Me and Nicole were super sick. Worst day of the year by far. I won't go any further than that. And set review is supposed to be on Friday, but still feeling really bad. Moved it to Saturday. Now it's Saturday, and I'm still feeling pretty damn awful. So you can see here, uh, that's me being led by Fibble Thip. We're going to move a set review to Monday at... High noon still. Uh, this does crunch things a little bit because tenure bruises on Wednesday, but I just I just can't do it. So as a little uh, as a little apology, I do feel really really bad about moving it twice. Obviously, this is really important for me. It's my, my main content cycle. It's like really really important for me to do my, my new things. And now I'm super super behind. Also, everyone else is gonna have their set rooms out first. What can I do? But as an apology, I'm gonna play a deck for you. Play like a match or two with a deck that uh, we considered as a version of Vampires for the Pro Tour. And uh, we decided to dismiss it because we only had like a few days left and it felt like Rakdos was really, really good anyway. And like, it felt like this was too different to try and work on. But I haven't played this on content yet. This is uh, uh, a version I've not played at all. I kind of kept it, kept it in my back pocket. And here we are. So this is just Vampires in Pioneer. Splashing green for eight elves and three copies of Huntmaster's Redemption, which is a saga. Makes token... Then you can sack a creature and search for a creature. This can go find your Vaynerper, uh, which is kind of awesome. And then it's a little bit of aggro pump here too. So obviously turn two Preacher or turn two Soren is freaking awesome. And uh, this deck definitely loses a lot of the, um, the the flexibility and like the filtering that Blood Tithe Harvester and Fable give you. Uh, but in exchange for a much faster, more powerful clock. Turn two Preacher is insane. Uh, so going to play a match too. And again, I'm really, really sorry. Set review will be on Monday at 8. I'm sorry, Monday, not 8. I'm sorry, Monday the 8th at high noon Eastern Standard Time up on YouTube that day. And again, 10 years, 10 years is going to be Wednesday. Again, I'm sorry about uh about that and shit, but let's just uh, power through. All right, no ad. Uh, chat coming out with me. Uh, I was just telling chat in the, in the interim there, but uh, I think that if they ban Fable, this could be a way to go with the deck, which is kind of cool, but... Alright, so we got the turn 2 Preacher, which is awesome. We're going to keep this. I It's funny, so we had an earthquake here yesterday in New York, which is obviously very weird. And uh, I was in a video call meeting about my new computer, which is cool. We're working on trying to get that set up. And um, I'm in the call, like in the middle of like a business call, and Nicole was just like... Gets up and she's like, did you feel that? Is the house shaking? What's going on? And I'm just like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, like, Nicole never never will interrupt me during our meeting or whatever. Like, some, you know, so I'm like, what is going on? Like, and like, I just didn't even notice it at all. So, uh, but yeah, apparently there's an earthquake. East Coast, it's a 4.5 or something in New Jersey. Um, out, out here on Long Island, is barely a tremor, so. All right, we got Preacher going, it's pretty sweet. So, we're just gonna attack and play Huntsman's. An elf, yeah. This is my background music. This is uh, a really cool, like, Western ambience track by Stephen Lynn on YouTube, and uh, it's really, really sweet. It's not a, uh, it's not the the game music. It's cool though, right? It's like really like sweet uh, sound effects and stuff. Impulse, impulse, interesting. So you can see here, this deck, this deck is much more aggressive than the Rakdos version is. Um, you know, it's it's turn three, and we have like, you know, whatever, five, six, seven, eight power in play. All right, they are a Lotus Field stage deck. And this thing also pops off with the Overrun stuff, too. That's a good throw. Um, let me just sack a creature and go get... We can also just cast Ripper if we draw land. I should have sorry, we need to draw land, but... That's the thing also that the Elves can cast Ripper, too. We're working on getting a new PC, so it's working out really well. I got a lot, I'm doing a lot of things behind the scenes for our sponsorship and stuff goes. I have a new sponsor. Um, I think if I get big rips, then uh, they just wrath, I lose it all, but. Um, anyway. I cast the thought sees. We cast Ripper also and it resolves so we can push through a, a Wrath or something. 
This thing is really cool. I, I was a pretty big advocate for it. Uh, but we only really tried it out, like, maybe three days before deck submission. And I played a few games with it, like, at, like, 10 p.m. the night. Might have been, like, the night before three days. Maybe we had, like, two or three days left. I remember I played some games with Sky. I was crushing Phoenix with it. This sand. Um, and... Um, that's annoying. And, uh, so Sunfall counteracts the... What a weird hand. Uh, and I was really, really enamored with it. I thought it was a really cool idea. But, like, we had our meeting on the morning the next day, and I was like... You know, like, Jim, what do you think of the other Govari deck? And I was like, we shouldn't work on it. It's just too much to do in a short period of time. Ractor seems really good. Dave Reset, thanks so much. Um, I'm just going to take the Get Lost. I'm just freaking jam. I mean, they're not any mana, so, like, yeah, they're going to march the Preacher, pitching a card. It's fine. We're just gonna try and kill them, so. Gonna play everything. But yeah. Definitely a cool list. They draw land. We're gonna overrun next turn. And cast Vayne Ripper. I guess they have Sunfall, I don't wanna want cast Vayne Ripper. So. Let's go here. So we attack for a bunch. I should be dead here, honestly. That's the problem, Chrome Channeler. See, that's the problem in this business. Chrome Channeler says, sorry to hear you're sick. Watching other set reviews now. That's it. You gotta be first. All right, we didn't draw land. That's lucky. So, we're gonna bring in uh, Duresses, Lilianas. Maybe shielded. Bitter triumphs. Got the fatal pushes. I'm not gonna bother trying to kill the one three. Um, I'm bother with bitter triumph. Need to apply a lot of pressure. Maybe like don't bring in shield and shave river. And shave like an elf or two. It's like they're they're so super heavy. Let's try this. Okay, this is fine. It's a lot of thoughts these. Uh, I kind of want to thoughts these actually, because if they have the the proctor, I want to hit it. Where's the thoughts these? This is wrong, but they have proctor, but no lotus fields. Impulse can find it maybe. Appreciate that, Plasma. And again, I appreciate all the well, well wishes, everyone. You're all awesome. I have an arena video coming out too, which is super cool. I'm gonna have a video on the main arena channel, going over the top five most wanted standard cards for, uh, for this set, which is super fun. So, Liana of the Veil. This doesn't seem great here. Um, he just thought he's copter. Wow. Grant sucks. My set review is going to cover everything. The set review will cover all of the main set, all of the big score cards, which are also in standard in the main set. Those are going to be in the set review itself. And then I'm going to do a separate section for the other bonus sheet cards that will be legal in other formats. Um, I guess I just like E.V. Ganjo. Okay.
I'm gonna search for a ripper, obviously that just seems bad, so. I should I should have watched these first probably. Whatever. Um I definitely have a spell in their hand, honestly. I should cast the line. I should put the line first, like I see like a sensor. Sure. Well, I found Lotus Field, but like obviously not the most relevant. Like it's a little lighter on like things to make Soren good, uh, but at the same time, obviously it's you know casting it faster and stuff. This is a much more aggressive version of a deck for sure, like much much more aggressive. All right, well, now they have much of mana, but the hall is a little annoying too. I just want to kill Soren. That's fine, right? We should nug them for six. That's fun. Yes, as I said earlier, but this is a deck that, that we, we were considering it. Ultimately, decided to just uh, put it aside because we didn't have, didn't have enough time left to work on it. And it's time is time management is very very important in uh, preparation for an event because you only have so much time. And it's it was a rabbit hole we could have gone down, but like I think it would have been detrimental rather than beneficial overall. So this hall is kind of holding us back here. Probably a matchup that's better for Rakdos, but... <laughs> sure. Yeah, we, the thing is, we also just thought Rakdos was great. So, like, you know, there wasn't, wasn't like Rakdos was missing something, per se, you know? Alright, that's... That's a good draw. Um... So if I were to fire in three, four, five, six. If I fire in with the Muta Vaults, they block and go to two, and they can't make a token with the Arden Veil or use Thespian Stage, and I think that's worth it. So again, even though we're throwing away a creature here, we're doing so for a good cause. Oh, I guess I can block and then tap the stage. That's true. Make it still use stage, but whatever. It's still fine. They block the Muta Vault and not the Beast, so they draw a Sweeper. It's really bad for us, but we don't need for Mind Splice apparatus to be good in standard. It's a redundancy, I think. It's hard to build a deck that's good with good with Mind Slice, but also good when you don't draw it. They copy. So they have two lotus fields now. Now they draw land. They can. So now they can. They weren't dead. They could block with the hall and make a token. But whatever. Sure, we'll take it. Again, I'm trying to explain. You know, it. Part of the problem is that with when you when you're putting on a show, marketing is really important, right? So I've been spending the last two or three weeks trying to let you all know. The set review is going to be this Friday at this time. Make sure you're there. Make sure you're there. Make sure you're there. Make sure you're there. Kind of hammering it into your heads. And uh, so when you have to cancel, you can't just let everyone know about it at the same time because you spent three weeks trying to advertise it. And now, you know, the one of the things that I learned, and eh, like I would say early on in content creation, with maybe mid, mid on in content creation, is that. Most people don't hear the things that you say when you say them once. You know, it's easy to think the sand sucks. Uh, on a mulligan. That's better. 
Uh, it's easy to think that because you say, hey folks, I'm doing a set review on Friday, I'll see you there. Or if you tweet that, that like your entire audience sees it because oh, I have 20,000 followers, they're all gonna see it, great. Ooh, that's sick. Um, what you don't realize is that I would say you have like your your like hardcore audience, you know, say that's like five to ten percent of your audience that is, you know, subscribers, always in the Discord, you know, um this is the mirror. <laughs> uh, you know, and they're they're always there and they're they're super into your stuff. They'll 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 always know for sure. But that's you know, maybe ten percent of your audience. Grease fang, huh? That's terrible for us. Uh but ninety percent of your audience, you know, uh, of the 90% of your audience, I would say maybe 20% of them will see, maybe even less, 10% of them will see any given stream or tweet. So you need to say it, you know, I don't know, five times, 10 times over the course of a week to try and get everyone. Um, otherwise, they just want to hear it, you know, so. Uh, my, their hand's pretty bad, at least. Uh, so now that I'm here trying to reschedule my thing, that entire three weeks of promotion is gone, and I try to get everyone in one shot. And be like, hey, actually, it's gonna be tomorrow. Sorry, you know, Which sucks. So, yeah, good, good game, my friend. All right, they just gotta land. You know what time it is, folks? It's time to do the thing. I'm a vampire. They discard a Parahelion. That's annoying. And thoughts these me. Alright, that's fun. Looking forward to a set review though. It looks, looks, looks like a very fun and very powerful set. Tenure Bruce should be great also. So. Uh. I'd say I want to defend Sworn actually, so. Let's do this. What does Grease Fang do about a Ripper? Not much, hopefully. What's up, Bobby? Who am I going to see on Monday for this set review? Raise your hand in chat. Appreciate y'all. Big rips. Wasn't turn three. Uh, so we need to. We're gonna lay lines. The problem also is lay lines are worse than this deck too because you don't have Fable to discard them to. All you have is two copters, and I might even board out copter in this matchup. because discarding ley lines is important. Let's try this. Huntsman's good. It's a good card. Just like good card on rate. It's three different three. Two permanents. Can tutor for stuff. A little overrun pump. Just a good, just a fine card. Double ley line. All right, I guess we're gonna keep. This is, this is a fun question we had in testing a lot, was like, do you put both ley lines in? Obviously in Rakdos you have blood tokens and fables to discard and loot. We only have, uh, we only have, uh, the copters, so. 
Oh, uh, Monday's the eclipse, too. Ugh. Sick physically or mentally. That sucks. What am I gonna do? Do I have ideas for B, I, S, and bombs, or do it off the fly? Oh, no, I, I go through and, like, do them pre preemptively, but I have, I have not done it yet, though. Vessel of nascency, sure. Reverse, okay. Thought sees me, sure. Preacher man. Preacher man says it's the end of days. It is. This sounds pretty cool. I I originally found it for um. So I wanted some like background music for the like thematic stuff for the set. It's just like really really cool. It kind of like hits this spot between just like ambient YouTube stuff and like post rock drone stuff that I love, like you know Godspeed and like Earth and things like that. So it's like pretty freaking sweet. You're in a 99% eclipse area. It's funny. I saw, um, take bitter triumph. I saw that, uh, the, there's a, they showed all the Airbnbs over the cost, over the path of the 100% eclipse, whatever, and they're all booked for like this, you know, weird looking stretch across the country. It's funny. Preacher man, it is so. Uh, just gonna start gaming preachers here. The last Airbnb is for your town to go for 3k. Yeah, I mean, that's not happen very often, right? How often does a full a full eclipse happen? Oh, that's interesting. They have shoulder in their deck. Alright. Well. Um, I guess we're gonna draw this in life, but. Big rips. Obviously, there's a bit of anti synergy between Ripper and Leyline, where their creatures won't hit the graveyard, but sorry, they're. Creature cards won't hit the graveyard, their tokens will. Couch play reset, thanks so much. Wither Bloom command, shrink my preacher. It's kind of annoying. Alright, now we get tokens, so it's like fine. Drawing a land's really good there, because we're trying to find a land for Ripper. Um. Alright, we draw a land up pretty good here. What can this find? Artifact creature finds it right, finds a vehicle. Oh no, I found a boat. Dying means goes to the graveyard. So. They miss a land drop, which is gross. By gross, I mean awesome. And we draw the land, too. Sick. Alright, so now we just... Now we just jam. We just play Ripper and attack with everything. We're gonna get... Two life off this. Have three blood. Yeah, this, this is insane, so... Big Ripper... So we'll gain at least two and have four blockers. <laughs> 
The video I did for the Arena Channel came out really well, too, so. They go to six. I go to five. Say go. I mean, I think we're golden here, right? I don't think that... Unless they have, like... They have, like, that blot out card. I can exile this without us taking any damage. We're still in, like, okay shape then, but... Oh, well, there you go, folks. A deck we thought about playing for the Pro Tour, ultimately didn't have time to work on, but I think it's really cool, and a deck that could be a really cool deck. Uh, a really cool deck um, if they ban Fable, which is certainly a possibility. So, that's it for me, folks. Uh, again, really sorry to your schedule again, uh, but I just feel like absolute dog shit, and I'm going to take a few days to get better. It really sucks for me, because, like, like I said, like, on Wednesday, me and Nagal had, like, the most productive day. We got so much stuff done. Like, I recorded the Arena video for the, or the Magic, I recorded a video for the official Magic channel, wrote my article, recorded another video, wrote a bunch of emails, got new sponsors on the way, just, literally just did a whole bunch of shit, got so much done, we were so pleased. Like, that night, we're like, man, this is awesome, we got so much done, we're feeling so great, we're finally getting on track, and then the next day, it's just a shit show. It was an absolute shit show. And we're still recovering, and now we're super behind again because obviously that's just how it works. But uh, Cassian's fine though; he, he didn't get sick at all. So, uh, but but yeah. So, uh, Serbia's gonna be on Monday. Tender Bruises on Wednesday, and then of course next week uh, the release is on is the following Tuesday, which will be the sort of Bronze Mythic, and then I leave for Command Fest Dallas, and then the Pro Tour, which is insane. So not a not a great time for me to get sick, obviously, but is what it is. And I'll see you all on Monday up on YouTube also. And uh, I can appreciate your support. And I'm really sorry to freaking have to move this around and stuff. It just fucking blows, but it sucks. So, all right. YouTube folks, I love you. Like, comment, subscribe. You're all great. Peace.